And hello there. Good uh, morning, good afternoon. Hello, my friends. Hajj. Um, uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Good to see you here. I'm back with photorealism in Photoshop for this Photoshop Masterclass today. So thanks so much for joining me or hanging out with me or joining me again. Um, hats off to uh, Daily Creative Challenges, of course. T. White in the house. And uh, this will be fun. I think it's fun to work on something that has uh, some photorealism qualities, which will be cool, and all the techniques that make things look real. So hello, Sergio Burritos in the house. What's up, man? Awesome. Uh, Hussein, Ali, good to see you as well. Annika, Michelle, thank you so much, Michelle. Got the confirmation. And we are go for launch. Um, hello, Carol, Marsha, Susan Wilson, Frank's in the house. All right, so let's do this, huh? Uh, by the way, we could do photorealism, but we could also have fun with this because I have like a thousand, thousand ideas, right, essentially. So uh, let's switch over and let's get this party started. This is a, this is a uh, Photoshop master class, but as you can see, I'm actually right here in Bridge. I don't know if you guys use Bridge at all. I like jumping into Bridge just because it gives me a lovely preview of images. As you can see right here, jump to these landscapes, right? And I could see just like a number of uh, beautiful images, kind of full screen. In fact, let's go even more full screen for you guys. Only the best for you. So again, good to have you here. And let's get this started. Cheers. delicious all right switch to the maple maple bourbon here we are again just some fun images that I'm gonna work with as we can see right in here uh, Marsha loves bridge that's good to hear uh, I love it as well but again different images that I want to kind of sort of make pop and just add some fun things to like this one for instance again take this image we could load them all in we could just double click on them actually let's open them up in Photoshop, or we could open them up into a stack. So I will do that if uh, I'm not sure which images to use and I just wanna like load in all of these. That one I know I've used before. That one I've used before. Yeah, let's get some of these ones. Oh yeah. Right, I have them all selected. So in Bridge, uh, I like this. Photoshop. Uh, load files into Photoshop layers, okay? I also like this image, so let's select that as well. I like the thought of this, we're gonna, we have a couple different ideas that are gonna happen, right? So we're loading into Photoshop layers. Oh, in the right Photoshop. So it's opening up the wrong Photoshop. That happens. Let's try this once more. Sorry. Oops. All right, let's grab some of these images. This one, this one, this one, this one. <sighs> yeah. Uh, let's go into preferences. File type association. So yeah, guess what? I'm actually using uh, different Mm, wait for it. We're looking PSD. Here we are. There we go. Change that. There we go. Fixed. Yeah, I have, uh, again, we're in the thick of Mac stuff, so I have other versions of Photoshop. Oh, gosh. Man, don't you hate it when that happens? I'm so sorry, everybody. This is getting a sneak peek. I'm just going to drag these into Photoshop. In the, in the version that I actually am able to show you guys. The other versions were the wrong version. Okay, so they're loading up. This will be fun. I think this will be cool, Varun. 
Uh, bridge is cool. Bridge definitely has its place. I use it for presentations a lot because it, it just allows you to show uh, everything nice and clean on your desktop if you want to, right? And you can have different views and stuff like that. Uh, and then again, we just kind of open up that full in, full screen like so, right? And go through these different images. So Bridge kind of, I think Bridge was created and then uh, Adobe created Lightroom, right? So we're like, hey, we need to give you ways to organize photos and view them. Ooh, this one's gorgeous. But also edit them. So thus birthed um, good old Lightroom. All right. So now you guys got it. Okay, Command T. Oh yeah, this is this is some work. We can figure out which images we want to use. Uh, I have a couple and a couple different ideas. So I think what would be cool, do we do something photorealistic that is similar to that rusted car and boat? Okay, and one thing you could do as well, since I'm viewing a bunch of images and they're all very large, I can't really see what's what. So I usually set up shortcuts I'm currently viewing all uh, tiled, but since that one I have zoomed down and I wanna zoom down all of these so I can see them as thumbnails in Photoshop, we can go to Arrange and we can match Zoom and Location. Match all, oh, and even Rotation. There we go, now we could see everything nice and neat and I can decide which images to use. So let's drop this one up there. Here are my, um, ru my rusted vehicle and my rusted boat. And let me just compile a couple of other ones. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just dragging one image into this one um, PSD file. Okay, so I'm just kind of compositing everything into one. But here I can, I'm making some decisions on which images I want to use for my layout. There we go. This one as well. Cool. Got it done. Let's take it, let's save it. Desktop. This is going to be photorealism one, comp one, and then we'll have comp two. Uh, sorry, I'm not looking at chat. I just... Lots of rust in today's project. Can we request chocolate? Sure, I guess you could You could request anything that you want, I guess. Uh, one of the things in Photoshop that uh, you currently cannot do is like there's not a way to close without saving. So that you can set up anything as an action uh, with a shortcut key. So that is uh, the way around that. So that's one of the shortcut keys I would actually like to set up. So here these two are. I also have like a third idea as well. So we want to make something photorealistic, but uh, also has uh, sort of a fantastic element to it. Okay. So I have these landscapes. Okay. So through these, we can start to like add a person, whether the person was there or not, or we could add something like totally unique in some of these scenarios, right? So I think for some of these, right, we want to add something sort of, I don't know, extra special, but we want to make it look realistic. So right here, if we decided we want to add um, an astronaut, right, which is again, a good idea. We can do that, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to drop one in. For this one, again, similar theme, right, overall, but two different, two entirely different photos. I like the idea of, uh, you know, you have an old rusted car, but instead of a rusted car, uh, it looks like a spaceship that uh, has been downed. And maybe it's, maybe it looks like a ship not from this world. So it's some alien spacecraft has a retro vibe and it looks like it's been sitting there forever and rusted. So it's like taking something like this and making it look like a spaceship that's all rusted out, right? Two things going on, right? So it's kind of like, it's kind of a continuous story. You have one where you have the rusted ship, the other one where you have the, the astronaut or the person on some foreign land, okay? 
So both of these is going to require some work. We're going to start with the astronaut because this is going to be easier to kind of comp in, right? Ooh, look at this guy right here. Ooh, look at you hanging out there. Didn't even notice him. But let's say we want to put an astronaut in here. So let's do that really fast. Actually, we'll do this over the course of an hour, and I want to welcome everybody. Also, Muriel out there, hello, hello. Hussein, Sergio, yep, awesome. Good to have you guys here. Retrofuturism, ooh, retro, love it. And that's kind of why I'm kind of picking this photo. I'm kind of drawn to this, because this has a very retro vibe to it, right? It looks like an old Kodak type photo, right? But we're, again, we're gonna put an astronaut in here, right? I love the idea of having an astronaut in a photo that, and the photo was taken in, taken in the 20s. It's like, hey, we had this technology before we let the rest of the world know about it. So super fun concepts, I think, overall. Go to libraries. Uh, you could always jump out to stock.adobe.com. You guys know all my tricks by now, right? Uh, you can go to free, right? And you can search within free astronaut just to see what we get. I'm totally curious. Oh, boom. So again, free uh, free content. Even this guy right here. Perfect. You know, something kind of like that, right? Oh, shoot. It says license. Why does it say license? Is this not set to free? Oh, you know, it might be set. To, it says license, but it's actually free to license. If that makes any sense. So that should be the case, by the way. There's our astronaut, like so. Couple others we could sort by just photos, right? But again, free asset, let's open that up. There he is, cool. So he's in the house, Mercurial. Mercurial, I love your name. This astronaut, so a lot of times the astronaut shots that you get, they're actually from like, I feel like they're from museums and they're just displaying the astronaut um, suit, which again is totally fine, take that copy it, drop it in here. That's one we'll work with. Okay. Just checking out a couple of these, any other images that might be interesting to use. And I think we're good. Uh, yeah. Got it, got it. Astronaut, there you are, buddy. He's like, oh, I've landed on this planet. And it looks just like Earth. Oh, look at this lady. I didn't even notice her back there. It's like, come on, you two, just get out of my shot. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, watch later, see what shortcut I assign. I'm sorry, I don't have that shortcut assigned, but again, that's all around. Um, good old um, actions. Right here, we could flip this. Again, just some shortcut keys that I use. Command T to transform. And then if you right click, all that extra stuff is right there. So it's like super easy. Um, yeah, window arrange is not a shortcut. You gotta build that in yourself. So you gotta build in your arrange, your consolidate, stuff like that. Right, from there, we'll go to properties panel. We'll do remove background on our astronaut, right? Doesn't do the best job, right? We could still see, oh, there's some additional, right? Some, uh, some areas that we still need to fill in. Right, we could double click on that. We could start to brush in. The reason I like this uh, selected mask area is because um, obviously I can kind of see the background and you know, I kind of like adjust the opacity. Um, let's try this. I actually don't use object aware that much, but anyways. Just add on like so you get the idea another way to do this click OK jump out here go back to this original image use your uh, quick selection I actually use quick selection a lot just kind of rolling around this area filling with the foreground color oops foreground color inverting B for brush X to flip the colors, crank up the flow, 
right? And now we're not using select and mask, but uh, I'm able to jump in. And by the way, I could always disable this layer mask and I could see how much more is there. So I could still use um, my quick selection tool, which honestly I use a lot, right? Why? Because it's quick and I only have an hour and I have to do a full composite. So again, the mask is still there. There it is. Let's invert it. B for brush, paint that in. We're good to go. Okay, done, done. Convert to smart object, which is also a shortcut key, but yeah, it's right here. <sighs> Typically in here, you know, convert to smart object, but it's already converted. But I, yeah, I can make as many smart objects as I want. Um, Oh yeah, you could select density with mask selected. Oh, okay, uh, and the edit mask, you can select density from the properties panel. Let's go in there and let's just take a look at that. And I have uh, Photoshop set up, so when I do double click on my layer mask, it does open select and mask. I'm also always up to learning more, so uh, it might not, I don't know where density is. So anyway. So everything looks good to me. We need to do a couple things with this. We have the color and I'm not even sure this is the right image. I do know um, that like right away, um, let's actually select in here. Oh, you're talking about density right here. Okay, there we go take that down and okay, that's a good way to kind of see the original image. I like that as well. So you either toggle it on or off or adjust the density if you want to see the original image. Yeah, totally works into it. I could tell already as soon as I selected this image is that uh, it's it, it, the angle is not not going to be exactly correct, right? Because what's happening with this perspective, like if I drew um, the horizon line, the horizon line would be you know, clear up here, right? This is probably the horizon line right there. You know, and it's an extreme uh, perspective on this as well. So basically the perspective I know is off when adding this photo. So to make it photorealistic, I'm probably gonna have to do a couple little tricks to get this just right. This is a smart object, so I can shrink it down. And I need to make it the right size, bam. Right, it needs to be the right color, it needs to be the right angle and all that stuff. Okay, select the mask, then the properties. Perfect, thank you, Varun. You are awesome, appreciate it. So we need to start adjusting the angle of this guy and his position, right? First of all, we're already losing his feet, right? So maybe we will go in here. And like you're saying, we could adjust the density. His feet look a little weird. These are the weirdest little boots that I've ever seen on an astronaut, right? But we'll still go with it. We need to match the color, the angle, the texture, probably the, th the three main things, the brightness and contrast. And I should be writing these things down, right? So this is our checklist. Uh, we need to match color. Uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say color, I'm gonna see whites, blacks. Uh, the, um, uh, the sharpness and texture and of course the angle angle and any any sort of focus but that's along with sharpness right texture is also very important because as you take a look at these photos like look at how grainy this photo is i have to add that sort of grain to this guy but these are typically sort of our little this is our little checklist right here We'll start with the angle and position, and then we'll work on color. Uh, uh, we could try match color. Yeah, we'll, when we get into color, we'll definitely try match color. We wanna do, just like with selecting Marsha, we wanna do like the, the easiest thing first, right? We'll start with the easy and then see, and see if that gets us like 80, 90% the way there. So I think it's a great idea. Uh, for this guy, I'm going to use Puppet Warp to kind of manipulate him into place, right? 
Yeah, so thank you, Varun. His shoes are so weird. I don't know what's up. So we'll use Puppet Warp. We'll set some pins in here. Because all I want to do is I want to angle him more to the... <clears throat> excuse me. To the uh, to the river, right? He needs to kind of have... This This kind of helps me fool the, the perspective issue that I have. Is by putting this front a little bit more in front of this foot. Right? So that kind of helps us solve a little bit of the... Um, the angle issue that we have, right? And we can manipulate accordingly, just like that. Command H, we could hide that, just like so. We could do some other little tricks as well. So, and again, I'm still kind of working on positioning him into place, but since this is that astronaut, it's in his lovely little smart object layer, I can throw another layer mask on top of it. Shove ammo. Right, and then from there, just kind of fake. Let's take a look at some some of these stones and these rocks. So we'll just do some nice overlap. And the fun thing about this, this is gonna be so small, you're not even gonna notice. But this is a case where like we do have a rock, and then it just gonna it's gonna help us hide these weird shoes. Can we all agree? These are some weird shoes, right? So again, we'll have rocks over it, and then we can add some shading in here as well. But that's all I'm doing. Kind of showing that, there we go. His feet are kind of behind some rocks is the goal. We'll shrink him down some more. We could do with, uh, shrink it down with confidence. Cause look at the size of this guy. We we got so lucky by the way, Eve and Michelle and uh, Bashkar, hello. Uh, good to see you out there on uh, YouTube. You could always join me on, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Good old Behance. Look at this guy, Compare in terms of size, I get it, he's closer, but but this gives you an idea of size. He is massive compared to this guy. Looks like he's taking a photo. It's like we have one, a guy, one guy's taking a picture of the other guy, but we do need to shrink him down a little bit. And what it does, when these, whenever you have an astronaut or whatever, something small, everything else seems very vast and big. It just, I think it makes everything look really cool. But we will make him a little a little larger. Remember, we have her back there. He's still pretty large, but proportionally he should be like, okay. Ooh, I really like this stone right here. This big one? Let's cover up more of his front foot with it. Like that. Chop it off. Shortcut key, uh, command uh, delete, just so you know, will fill with the foreground color. Uh, option delete will fill with the background color. Okay. All right. Got somebody from Bangladesh. What is your name, my friend? Would love to see you and uh, know who I'm talking to, right? So there's our guy. We're trying to get this perspective right. I don't know if the perspective, perspective is still good. Probably what I would do is uh, I would see other what other resources we have out there. So plugins, use this a lot. You know, you can add these free searches. So free stock search, right? That's one. Oh darn! Let me log in. Everybody, everybody, get my email real fast if you don't have it already. There's my email. Astronaut, or I could say cosmonaut if I want to. Searching. And this searches multiple sites. So we got Unsplash in here, Wiki Images, or Pixabay. Pixabay looks like. Uh, but again, you can see a number of images in here. So I might be able to find something that works a little bit better, potentially. Either way, we're finding some really cool images in here. Like this one, for instance. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at this bad boy. <clears throat> well, that is weird. Boy, I did not, I was not expecting that. Or this guy right here. Yeah, let's go ahead. Take a look at this one. I did save to computer. Just want to open it up. This guy. Okay. Okay. Oh, this guy's awesome. So again, just an additional resource. I could jump out, find what I need potentially. Shortcut keys. That guy I do not want. This one we already have, so we close that. I really like this one. I just like that image. Let's drop it in there. Fun to play with. 
Um, how's everybody doing today? Oh, Jan Eric, uh, he has to restart his computer. We'll just wait here. Don't mind us. I have to pause until Jan Eric gets back because he probably is going to have some pun, and we don't want to miss any weird or funny pun. Okay, so there we go. A couple extra characters that we could work with as well. Third option. You guys know I'm going to go here. Plugins. <sighs> Pixel Squid. Let's open up Pixel Squid. It's going to be your best friend. It's like, hey, you know what? I did all the searching I could. First of all, I would actually try Adobe Stock. It, any chance you get, use, use a real photo, right? Definitely. That's going to be your best bet. Uh, your next option is using something from Pixel Squid because I know the angle is going to be right and I might be able to get away with it because, again, this is going to be pretty small. Astronaut. Here we go. We got this guy. This guy's cool. We'll add him. Our salon's in the house. Switching over to chat. Welcome, Leonardo D'Souza. Good to have you here. Here's our lovely character right here now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's already at, I feel like, a better angle. But guess what? We could go ahead and rotate him and get that right angle. So we'll just do up just a touch, right? Like so. We'll see it kick in. We'll zoom out. Ah, oh, that's, that's better if you ask me. Uh, is the 3D and Illustrator going away too? Just curious. No, Varun, not to worry. In fact, it's more like the opposite will be happening. So, cheers. Yeah, Varun, over my dead body will they ever remove Will we ever remove 3D in uh, Illustrator? Because it's just too amazing. It's too good. I mean, it's so good. Right? Just the way it is. Okay, so here's our one character. There he is. You might want to create a backup. Command-J. We have this guy we could work with. Let's see what else we have in here really fast. Okay. Uh, this guy. Yeah. Let's just have some fun, everyone. Look at this guy. Ooh, I like how he's looking up at you. And these are actually 3D models. And the thing is, is you can't control the lighting. So sometimes that means we have to paste in, you know, or um, paint in, excuse me, a lot of shadows. But here's this guy. This guy's looking pretty good too. He fits awfully well. So it's up to you guys who we want to use, but there he is. And he comes with a built-in shadow, all right? But let's turn him to high res. It's the high res version. And uh, in this case, I could turn on or turn off the shadows. And uh, that's what we'll go with. There we have that guy. All right. I, I want to get this done fast, if you don't mind. Let's figure out which character we're going to use. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with my original character for a couple reasons. One, it's a real photo. Uh, actually, let's zoom out. Let's just check. Oh, we could have so much fun with this. So good. Oh, here's another one. Oh, sorry, everybody. I'm getting so excited. I dig it. Found. Boom. Here we are. Astronaut. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Da, da, da. Good. We can kind of compare apples to apples now. Rotating this guy. See? See, I have more of the top of his helmet. This is going to work out much better. I bet you this guy's going to fit in much better. And that's who, what we're going to use. Boom. Boom, we could still work on color with the other one. Um, so, turn off the shadows, zoom out, there we are, right? So, let's do this. Yeah, 
Okay, you guys get the idea. Let's move on. Here he is. Add a little bit bit of depth by covering up some of his toes, right? Just kind of like there's some overlap with these rocks. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't have to be perfect, but they have to look like, you know, again, it's just like he's right in there. Like so. Okay, cool. There he is, moving back here. Find a spot where it will work out. How's everybody doing this fine day? All right, let's work on coloring. Uh, those suits are not IP68, so they can't cross the... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Norsh. <laughs> but that also made me laugh, too. <laughs> Stony. All right, so let's talk about stealing color, and let's try this out. So we have this background. You know, if you're confident in your comp... Actually, let's just go with that. Let's just unlock this background. Let's try to uh, steal the color. Let's see what happens. So here's one thing you could do. I'm going to try to just remap the color. We're going to do some color matching. Here's my astronaut. We'll go to image adjustments. And you can see right down here, match color isn't available, right? Because it doesn't work on smart objects. So uh, what you need to do is you need to rasterize them. So this is already uh, an issue we have with using match color, right? There is a way around this, though, as well. So, yeah, we'd have to think about that. Let's do match color. Just show you this dialogue that we get. We're saying, okay, this might be an easy way to do this. What's our source going to be? It's going to be in this comp that I'm working in. And we know... Uh, I want to steal color from the background, right? Go ahead and steal that background color. Boom, and there we have it. Steals that color, makes a more, um, I don't know, tannish, taupish color, right? And we can start to work on uh, the, um, the different options. So there's color casts as well. Not 100% sure what that means, but that kind of knocks it down a touch and makes them look less taupe. But we could also individually control this, right? So we could see how it f fades. We have more intense color. Let's drop the luminance down. You know, you get the idea. Let's zoom out a little bit. And uh, I feel like you could tell that there's like, it's still looking a little muddy in my opinion. Right, but that gets us part of the way there. We could go ahead and slick it, select OK and run with it. So match color is uh, is destructive. So there is that. Another way I like to show this is, um, you know, and again, you've probably seen this from me. Let's check the time. I have about 20 minutes for this astronaut. And we'll just do match color. We'll do uh, curves. We'll just call this astronaut. Man, I gotta. I just want to run through this so fast. Now, now, let's go to curves. There's my curves layer. Zoom in on this guy, and let's see what curves can do. Right, we know we need to amp up the red, right? But we need to just clip it to that guy like so. So we could amp up the red. Let's clip it, RGB, red, crank it up. We could also select um, on the image and click and drag to modify. So I can select this mid-tone right here and say, hey, if this, if this needs more red, I can crank that up. You can see how it's adjusting that curve point. This is a lot of work, I'm gonna be honest. I know I need to add green to get that taupe color, right? This is like so much work. This is hard work, people. This is hard, right? What I'd rather do is just kind of reset all of this. And I show this all the time, but let's go to uh, our auto options. Okay, so we can hit auto, right? That will adjust all of them. 
That's not what I want. These auto, it's crazy. Reset it. Let's go into our options for auto. And you can see this madness that I was doing before. And from here, this is where I'll typically find the dark and light colors. So the darks, I'm going to pick the darkest color is really just a nice taupe, like so. Um, the mid-tone is still going to be this like taupey color. And then our highlights are not that bright. The highlights would probably be that water, would be that yellow. Okay. So I am already sort of mapping the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights to uh, this image, right? It's not changing it that much. So let's just play with this some more, kind of cranking this up and see if we can kind of get a little bit more tint. Yeah, that's okay. That's not bad. Click OK, done. Uh, what that does is that kind of takes some of the guesswork out of um, mapping the colors. Content aware color grade. Yeah, I wonder how that would work. Okay. Mm. Let's go to work, people. So what we were doing a second ago was we were stealing colors directly from the background. We tried to do the auto, we tried to steal the colors, and then I'm just gonna use the background. So here's the background that I just blurred out. I could go ahead and put that on top of this astronaut, right? And then I can play with blend modes. Cause for instance, for this layer, we're gonna steal the color. We could take this down to say color. So steal the color from that layer and map it and put it right on that guy. It's always gonna be too intense because it just recolors everything. So typically you have to adjust the opacity. But that, that also looks like much better, right? I mean, if you ask me. Let's paint in some shadows. I gotta, there's more I wanna do, guys. I, I'm, I'm kind of over this, I wanna. I want to add more to this. I want to add a spaceship and some other fun things, right? Like so. Okay, cool. We got it. Right, so again, all I did is I, I, I took this background, you know, steal, steal these colors, right? And then you just change that to color. But you could also go through these other blend modes because a lot of these other blend modes might work because you might just need to knock off the dark or light colors depending on your composition. Already multiply looks pretty good because it's just mapping. It's taking the whites and uh, using this on, uh, on the whites. So that alone looks good because we are, uh, we're keeping the red of that um, in the flag and stuff like that. Color burn. We'll just roll through these linear burn, right? Again, it's not affecting any of the dark colors. So when I go in here, it's lightening up and totally making a mess of it. You could split this up into two. Did you want to know you could do that? Maybe a little Gaussian blur to the astronaut. Yes, we're gonna get into that too. Good call. So let's let's kind of move on, if that's okay. And maybe this color works just fine. I think it's I think it works fine. So you're right, as we look around, everything has a blur. This guy needs a blur as well. So sure enough, we can go to Gaussian blur. It's gonna blur out all of him. He disappeared, he got zapped up back to his spaceship, but we can go ahead and give him like just a touch of a blur so he matches in there a little bit better. Click okay, and there we are, right? Let's Twirl that down, we can see that's the blur that we've added. So it's non-destructive, which is nice. But again, he fits in there a little bit better. Let's work on the shadow a little bit more as we take a look. I'm never gonna use, try not to use black. I sample from, um, I'll sample from the blacks in this photo, right? So maybe this rock here. And then start painting. And let's take this flow down. Let's use my Wacom. 
Okay. It's painting right on top. Okay. Jan Eric's back. I'm gonna I gotta start from the very beginning. Sorry everybody. That's those are just the rules. Okay, so I have that shadow. That's actually painting the blacks on top of the whites. So yeah, no. Right? And again, that could work. Might overall. Linear burn. Yeah, let's use that. Linear burn seems to do the trick. I just think that looks better. So if you paint in a shadow, it's just gonna flatten the surface behind them and you need to like adhere to the rocks. And ideally, honestly, I would probably paint into this a little bit more. So I would jump in here, I'd add a layer mask, I'd hit B for brush, X to flip the color. So I have black selected and I'd start removing, you know, some of that. So like the tops of that, there we go, like that. That already looks better. Okay, you guys get the idea. Uh, let's move on. We're working on, we've worked on the angle. We have the color. We've worked on whites and blacks. We did the color and the whites and blacks like almost at the same time, thanks to, honestly, thanks to curves. Uh, and this this magical layer just set to color seemed to do the job. Uh, we then did the sharpness, which sharpness you like actually added blur to it. But it's not just adding blur, it's we would need to actually add a little bit of pixelation to this as well. What I typically do is actually add pixelate. Maybe we could try something else. Can I try something else really fast? Let's go to filter. We're gonna go to filter gallery. Oh, dang it. Let's take a look. Let's turn that off. We'll go to filter. Filter gallery. And uh, see if we can add, I don't know. I'm just trying to see if we could add some sort of grain without having to rasterize this. That's, that's kind of what I'm running into, right? We have texture down here. We have grain that might work, but the grain type, I want it to be just softer. And I could take down the intensity. So sure enough, I could use grain as a texture, give it a little bit of that grain. So this is making it look like a photo. It's taking that blur and it's just gonna like give, give me more of that photo quality. Maybe not, cause he's actually, oh, well, sorry, I got to turn on this other layer. Perfect, it works. Now we've matched roughly the grain. It's a little extreme, but it's nice that I have this filter gallery. I could jump in and still take that intensity down, right? It's still too intense, right? We want it just right about there, adding just like a little bit of that grain so it matches some of these other elements. Again, all these pixels, right? Cool. All right, I'd say that looks pretty good. I'd want to brighten it up a little bit more as well. Um, Go. Wait for it. There we go, overlay. I'm gonna set this to overlay. I just want, want to add some nice highlights. I have a new layer set to overlay. Overlay is just gonna give me this like little bit of pop because he's so flat, he needs a little pop on his helmet. Let's take this down and just kind of on the top parts. So right up here, I'm just gonna paint in a little, paint in a little more. Is that even showing up? It's so light. Oh, I'm painting with 1%. <laughs> but again, we can make it just give it a little bit of, like a little, little bit more highlight on some of these parts of his wonderful little suit. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. It's giving it like a, a little bit more depth. There we go. We added those little highlights. And adjust the opacity. Again, this is our job. This is what we do on a daily basis as designers. Uh, cool. So same thing with this helmet. Guess what? This helmet actually needs to reflect the river. So we're gonna do that really fast. Select that background, copy, paste. Copy, delete, bam. 
astronaut jumping in here. That's right. Basic. Oh yeah. Uh, this is massive. Look at this massive thing. I didn't even get to my spaceship, my other spaceship one yet. Anyways, we're just going to do this really fast. Drop this in here. Mm, from here, uh, we want to warp it. So we can take these warp points. We could also add additional points because right up here, yeah, I want to probably split it horizontally. Let's do that. Um, probably vertically too. Sure, why not? So when I like how to wrap this around his head. Oh, I could do a sphere eyes. What a great idea. Oh, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that so and so. <laughs> Let's do a sphere eyes. And just see what happens. Let's take this. We need to sphere eyes. I was going to bend it all myself. I'm like, okay, there has to be an easier way. <sighs> Let's jump in here. Let's sphere eyes. Let's see what happens. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Yeah, not so much. Sphere Eyes doesn't do what I want. I got all excited for no reason. Oops. So sorry, everybody. Okay, so I made a mistake here because this is warping on that image. And what I need to do is make this a smart object. Command T. Warp it. Now, uh, when I make something a smart object, it remembers all the settings, which I love. It's going to take some work and really I'm just going to, I'm going to warp this really fast and uh, you know, let's, it, it's going to be, it's going to be hardly noticeable, but this is a master class. So, Hey, you guys will notice it. There's our warping. It's a smart object. So it's going to remember that warp and I can clean it up later. Boom, boom, ba -bum -bum. Shabam. Shabam. It in there. Get it. Get it, Paul. Get it in there. Get it. Shrink it. Make it happen. Make it happen. Scrunch it. Pinch it. Scrunch it. All that stuff. There we go. Hey, that works. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, I just ran into this. Saving it, save this document back to its original file, flatten layers and discard extra data. So I added so much data that, I don't know, something got wonky in here. So let's just rasterize that layer. Let's, oh, that's a, oh, that's a ping file. Ah, oh. okay, that's okay. I'm glad this stuff happens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we we need a downed spaceship. I want to add so much to this, by the way. We just, I did all this work. It's all non-destructive. So when I do add a spaceship, if I decide to put one like back here, right? Because right back here, this is the perfect place for like a little spaceship, right? And I have all these settings that I could apply to it. Okay. Double clicking on this. So what's happening is this is a ping file. The, the, yeah, that's the problem. This is a ping file. Oh, brother. All right, let's fix it. Comp2, I didn't hardly even get to you, silly. Command T, uh, take all this stuff. At least these two things. Drag them over here. Convert that to a smart object. Man, oh man, dang it. Okay, so the nice thing is, here we go, I, do, I want this guy to be the same size, same position. We have all that data, by the way. I could see that this is, is this really 100%? No, it's not. Anyways, I'm just gonna shrink him down. And put him right here. Oh, we learned something, didn't we? 
I I don't know if you guys noticed, but like I kind of get excited when uh, I discover when I when I like learn something new. I'm just like, oh yeah, like I'm learning. I'm like, man, I did not know that. I'm always like, I'm growing. Okay, so we did all that so we could get a, just a minor reflection of the river in this guy's darn face mask, which you could hardly even see right now. So let's crank up the opacity of that. We could play with that all we want. We'll jump over. We're getting more of more of that right in there, okay? All right, done. We matched the texture. I'd say that's all looking pretty good. We could drop a spaceship back there, uh, whatever you want to do. So yes, thank you, Umar. The smart object was a ping file because that's what sometimes happens. Like you'll have this. Let's just see what happens. If I convert this, th this happens. Like, let me just convert this layer six, double click. This is a, it should be a photo, Photoshop big, but um, I did not make that original. That original uh, smart object came from Pixel Squid. So that's where the smart object is. In their smart objects are ping files. In fact, each rotation of the astronaut is a different ping file. So yes, you can have smart objects that are JPEGs, that are pings, maybe some other file formats. But yeah, there's our small details. He could still use a, uh, a little pop of some more things because he, he's kind of getting lost down there. But overall, he's in, in his place and we've added everything that we needed to. And uh, now we'll throw in a spaceship back here. Again, this is kind of a retro look. Uh, let's do that. And again, in this case, we'll still use Pixel Squid because I like them. The same spaceship, again, I can turn around, make this a rusted spaceship and uh, put it in that other setting that I talked about. So let's do space, ship. It'd be cool if it looked like it like maybe crashed in the water or something. Ooh, or this vehicle, that's cool. Yeah, let's use this one. Small details count. There's our little ship, our little uh, ATV. He's just bopping around his little ATV, right? It's gonna be sitting back there, the background. Hey, why not? I also like the idea of making a huge, um, yeah, just like a huge, you know, maybe that's back there like so. Okay, so that's one element. Let's go back and uh, let's take a look at a couple more things. We have this one. Ooh, this one's even cooler. Jeez, I needed to do a little bit more exploring before I just like grab the first spaceship I find. We want one that looks like it could like land on the ground. And checking the time, I have about four minutes. And I want it to be huge. Maybe something like this. Maybe, maybe not. I could use some help here, people. Star Wars Land Cruiser, you guys like that? We have this one right here. I know, it's kind of boring. Like some of this stuff is like, eh. I wanted a cool spaceship, like, I don't know, just something sweet. Let's take this one, hey, why not? All right, you guys get the idea. It's all gonna work the same. I would turn around, match the angle. All right, we get it into position first. I'll then work on the color and the shading. In this one, I gotta do some layering between um, the trees and then his spaceship. But let's just try to steal some of this content right down here that we stole before. Command J, bring this up, clip it, boom. Now he's kind of like the same color, just using that overlay right there. Uh, from there, since this is a smart object, we'll go down here. We'll steal all this stuff, because if you hold down the option key, you can click and drag and apply that blur 
and that texture. And now we already have that well on its way. We'll add our layer mask, just like we were layering with the, um, the uh, shoe. We could throw this on. And here's a case where you, I would blur the mask as well, right? So that mask needs to be blurred, but it's already back there and it's, we're well on our way. Cool, did you guys get it? I don't want the band hammer to crush me like it did earlier today. Um, but we're well on our way to making this look very realistic. So that's, that's the idea. Jason is up next, thank you so much for that. Uh, Cody Bear in the house. And um, again, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Um, here's the thing. This was easy to do because the background photo is so unique. It was really easy to match the color. That does most of the work for me. It would have been more difficult, which is why I was going to use that other photo. When you have like a high quality photo like this one, this one would get a little bit more tricky. So if you ever want to like hide any issues when it comes to compositing, throw a color lookup on top of it. Cause that's what looks like happen is happening here. Throw a look, color look on the whole thing and uh, it'll, it'll hide a multitude of sins, as I like to say, when it comes to compositing. Again, different look. You get the idea. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Appreciate you guys. Stay in touch. Appreciate you. You're awesome. We'll see you guys soon.